Good morning, my name is Father Matt McCarthy and I'm the Vocations Director for the Archdiocese of Toronto. I want to welcome everyone watching our second virtual Ordinandi youth event. I'm saddened that again this year we're doing this event virtually. However, I'm grateful that the local Sarah Clubs of Toronto have given us the ability to have this virtual platform to discuss our faith and to give us inspiration in all of our individual faith journeys. We'll be hearing from His Eminence, Thomas Cardinal Collins, a religious sister, Sister Margaret Moran, and of course the Ordinandi class of 2022. Let's start the program by hearing a reflection from Lisa Malcolm, a Catholic educator in the Toronto Catholic District School Board. My name is Lisa Malcolm, and I'm honored to be here with His Eminence, Thomas Cardinal Collins, members of the Ordinandi class and other religious life communities to share our unique faith journeys. Members of the Church respond to God's call through many different forms of service. My vocation as a member of the lay community has shown me that God calls some to exercise gifts that are inspired by the Holy Spirit. As a child, I grew up in a Catholic, faith-filled household. My parents were powerful role models for me, and they lived and preached the Gospel message on a daily basis. As a youth and adult in my parish, my role as catechist gave me the ability to share the teachings of the Catholic Church, the sacraments, and the liturgy with young people. This was a blessing. I was also able to share my love of music as a music minister. The chance to serve God and God's Church is a calling for some of us, and we do it joyfully. The excitement to study music and music education at university became a priority and a goal. The chance to become a music educator and teacher in our Catholic schools was an ideal occupation. The value of being in a Catholic school has always been right at the core of my being. I have shared my love of teaching for over 25 years with the Toronto Catholic District School Board. In my teaching experience, the idea of music and faith sounded like a perfect match. When I look back, my role in the parish had an influence in my music education. I see it as a sign and calling. I know that a job and a vocation are different. A job is what you do, whereas a vocation is who you are. To conclude, I also thank God for the privilege and honor for my vocation as a wife and mother. God has blessed this decision. I know that as long as I choose to love God through my role as a wife and mother, creating a place where they feel safe, respected, loved, and accepted, I am doing what I am called to do. May God continue to bless each and every one of you on your faith journey. May you call on God to help you to make important decisions that will allow you to share God's teachings and gifts with each other. Thank you, Ms. Malcolm, for those inspiring words. The vocation to teach our young students and the faith you show are integral in cultivating vocations for young Catholic minds. Now we will have a reflection from Sister Margaret Moran, a sister of the Pauline Order in Toronto. Hi, I'm Sister Margaret Moran, a member of the Congregation of the Daughters of St. Paul. So I think God is calling me, but how do I know for sure? 
This was the question that circled through my mind and heart over and over again when I was discerning my vocation to religious life. It's that question that is a bit fearful and uh, comes with a bit of trembling. And when I asked the vocation directress of the Daughters of St. Paul, but you know what? It's the same question young people are asking today. It's a scary question. And when it surfaces, it leads to other big questions. What if I don't like it? Will I be happy? Is it what I exactly want to do? But the exact response is not what really matters. Maybe I just need to ask the next question. What is the next step? Don't get too overwhelmed. Start maybe just by doing something simple, reading sacred scripture, speaking to your spiritual director or vocation director, setting aside some quiet time for prayer. Remember, the call to religious life is like every vocation. It requires a journey. God wants to give us answers, but he also wants to take us on a journey. It involves a bit of a risk, however. We always need to take a leap and let things unfold in our life. Sometimes God can even use an obstacle to push us in one direction or another. In my own journey, I felt totally convinced that I was going to be a teaching sister. Those were the sisters I had in school. That seemed to be the obvious choice, the, uh, the logical path. Until I went downtown with my mother to do a bit of a shopping spree. It was my birthday, and there was this kid running down the sidewalk. Now, it was a busy time of the day. Police were chasing after him, and everyone stopped to look at this spectacle. Well, after he passed, my mother turned around, and we were in front of a Pauline Book and Media Center. She asked me, you want to go in? I agreed, stepped into the shop, and was utterly shocked. There were these two sisters standing behind the counter. I, I just never saw sisters like this. What were they doing here in this busy place full of distractions? I, I didn't know what to say. And then they asked me, did you ever think of being a sister? Oh no, I, I just thought to myself, no, no, I can't believe they're asking this. But I gave them my name and address more to get them to stop talking to me and left. And I remember leaving the book center and saying to my mother, oh, I'm never going to be one of them. It just isn't my vocation. It's not my call. Well, the rest is history. Here I am. God is a God of surprises, but he will lead you when he wants you and where he wants you. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Moran. You've given us some food for thought and a glimpse into your own faith and vocation story. Next, we'll be listening to Reverend Mr. Daniel Corso, a representative of the Ordinandi class of 2022, to tell us his vocation story, as well as his eminence, Thomas Cardinal Collins, Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Toronto, to listen to their witness to the priestly vocation. My name is Deacon Daniel Corso, and I am a uh, a deacon for the Diocese of St. Catharines um, and I'm looking forward to getting ordained a priest in the spring. When I was in high school, uh, the most important thing in my life was, uh, was sports, um, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, and the most important thing in, in, in sports was, uh, was just training hard and getting good enough grades uh, to get a scholarship. And so that was kind of my, my, my focus all, all essentially from, from grade 9 through to, through to grade 12. Uh, and beyond. Uh, I was fortunate enough uh, that, I, that I was able to, uh, to achieve that and uh, so going to university my, my thoughts were definitely not on you know what does God want me to do with my life but rather you know how can I, how can I you know achieve the most and you know uh, get the most out of, uh, out of this experience uh, athletically, academically, socially um, and in, in my first year in university I remember our, uh, our team was, was doing really well it was amazing. Uh, I had a really wonderful girlfriend, and I seemed to be, you know, doing okay in, in class, which uh, I encourage you to work hard in school, uh, unlike myself. Um, but uh, but I also I also remember um, looking at my life and seeing how everything was going as well as it possibly could be. I felt like I had everything that I wanted, uh, and just still feeling feeling empty. You know, feeling like um, 
feeling like I, I, I could have as much of these things that I wanted and, and still not be happy. And, uh, and it was a scary thought. And um, to make a long story short, I ended up uh, making some, some really amazing friends who actually brought me back, uh, brought me back to church, brought me back uh, to, to Mass and, and got me connected with uh, a couple really wonderful priests and, and religious brothers. Um, and I remember one of these priests, uh, Father Paul, gave us a homily uh, one Sunday and he's speaking to, you know, I, I was 19 years old at the time, uh, he's speaking to university students who are, who are deciding what they're going to do with the rest of their lives. And, and he forced us, he didn't force us, but as a father, he, he invited us um, to look at our lives through, uh, through a, the, the, the Christian worldview. And he said, you know, guys, if, if we're really Christians, if we're really going to, you know, uh, live what we believe as Catholics, we need to accept three things. He said, number one, um, he says that you are the way that you are, you are who you are, because God created you that way on purpose. Um, so everything about yourself, the things you like about yourself, don't like about yourself, what you're good at, what you're not good at, uh, God made you that way. And he made you that way on purpose, not by accident. And the second thing that we need to know is that uh, we are made on purpose for a purpose. Right? God didn't just make us all different so that he could tell us apart, but he made us in different ways for different purposes. Um, and the third thing that, uh, that he said kind of tied it all together. But he said that if you find out who God is and you find out who you are and you find out what he created you for, you know, what, what purpose he made you for, to do that thing, whatever it is, to do that thing that God made you for is the greatest thing you could ever do with your life. It'll make you the happiest, um, it'll make you the most fulfilled, but it will also have the greatest possible impact on the world uh, than, than any other path. Right? You, could, you could have another dream for your life, um, but if it's not God's dream for your life, then it just, it will never, it'll always be second best. And I remember hearing that and you know, when you hear truth, it hits you in a different way. And even though I had no way of proving it, I knew that what I was hearing was true. And as a 19-year-old man, as a, as a, as a young man, I, I somehow had the courage um, later that day to, to go to God in prayer and say, you know, Lord, I don't want to waste my life doing anything other than what you created me to do, whatever that is. Um, Lord, show me who I am, show me who you are, and show me what it is that you have made me to do, and give me the courage to do that thing. Um, that was probably one of the most courageous prayers of my life and I had no idea what I was getting myself into um, because within a couple weeks God through a variety of, of people and circumstances in my life began to make it very clear that he was at least calling me to discern uh, the holy priesthood. Um, that was a shock, it was, it was certainly difficult but I couldn't deny it and um, to make a very long story very short, um, following that path has been the greatest blessing in my life. It's brought me greater joy. It's certainly brought me through, through greater trials, but it has been so beautiful. And uh, to, quote, uh, to quote an old priest uh, who, who spoke to me at the beginning of my journey, uh, he said, you know, Daniel, no one's ever going to build a statue of me, um, but I get to wake up every day uh, knowing that I, get, that I get to do exactly what God put me on this earth to do. And that is the greatest blessing I could hope for, for myself. And it's the greatest blessing that, that I could ask uh, for each and every one of you um, is to be able to get to know God, uh, ask him to show you who you are, show him what he's created you for, and to give him the courage, to give you the courage uh, to do that thing, whatever it is, to do that thing uh, with love and with joy and with purpose, uh, and ultimately to become a saint. Um, so I am uncertainly on that journey and uh, you are beginning that journey as well. Um, and with that, uh, I thank you for listening to, to my story, uh, and I greatly look forward to, to being ordained a priest uh, later this year. One of the most important symbols in our life is the heart. It's a sign of love, the love we have for one another and the love which the Lord God shows to us. I always uh, carry with me my little uh, red Bible because I think the Bible should be read. And so I will uh, quote here from the Gospel the Gospel of Matthew, where our Lord says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I think it's good for us to reflect upon that, that the love of the Lord is with us throughout our journey in life. 
but especially earlier on in life when we're thinking of what does God have in store for me? It's good to recognize we never travel alone. We go through life supported by the love of the Lord. And so as we think about that, I think we're especially called to reflect upon one of the symbols, which is very important in our life as Christians, and that is the sacred heart of Jesus. The heart is the sign of love. It is faithful. It is hidden away. It is constantly there to keep us alive. And that is what love is. Love is meant to be not just an emotion of a moment, but it is meant to be something that is there all the time, faithful throughout life. If we have a friend whom we love and care about, we want to be sure that that friendship is something that is not just for a moment, but is something that is there day by day, and maybe in hidden ways, which we show our love for the people around us. The heart is the sign of love which makes life worth living. And we need to think about that as we wonder, what is God calling me to do in my life? So let's think about the symbol of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, which you can see in many pictures and many statues in our churches. The heart is there, first of all, as a sign of love. The heart is wounded because our Lord was suffered on the cross. And very often, if we are really entering into a deep spirit of love for others, it involves suffering. It's not something that is shallow. It's not something that where someone says, I love you, but there's just words on the lips. There's nothing really there. Often that can involve sacrifice and suffering as our Lord himself showed us. The heart is surrounded by a crown of thorns, which again speaks to us that this world faces many, many struggles, many difficulties, and our Lord in the way of the cross shared in all of that. Our love is not to be something cheap or shallow. It will probably involve, if we are sincere about it, some real deep experience of the cross of Christ and of suffering. And that's why the Sacred Heart of Jesus and all the various images we use has the cross above it. That's the way we see the Lord coming to us. In fact, when we begin our prayers, we make the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. It's in that way that we recognize that Christ has come to be with us, to journey with us, to suffer for us. And that kind of dedication, giving ourselves completely to the Lord God and to others, is the only way to live, the only way to find true peace in our life and to find the true joy. And the heart, the sacred heart of Jesus is filled with fire and love and brightness, glory. We have too short a life in this world to waste it on just being mediocre, just halfway. We need to be on fire with the love for the Lord God and the love for other people. Our life is too short to waste it on being just mediocre and just being partial in the way we live. To use an image different from fire, the opposite of it, we need to dive into life, not just dip our toe in the pool of life, but dive in completely. And so there we have the symbol of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, which we find in many statues and images in our Catholic faith. It speaks to us of a love that is sacrificial, offered for others, a love that is generous, a love that involves sometimes suffering, a love that is deep, is steady, is faithful, like the beating heart. Many of the statues of the Sacred Heart, our Lord is pointing to it. And that reminds us that this is where we find the purpose in life as we look at what lies ahead of us. But very often, the statues of the Sacred Heart have the hands and the arms of the Lord reaching outward to reach out to others, to care for other people, not just me, myself, and I, but for others. And there's a famous story that in the First World War, there was one of those statues in, in France. And in the course of the battles, the hands got broken off and it looked like this. After the war, one of the parishioners in the church said, well, let's get an artist to make a new hands for a statue. But someone knew the meaning of the Sacred Heart more profoundly than that. He said, leave it like this, without the hands, and put a sign below it simply saying, you are his hands. And that's what we have to think as we look forward into the path of life that lies ahead of us. We are his hands. We are the ones who bring that love and care to other people. That is the sign of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. That is what gives us comfort and strength in our journey. 
And that is the way we can, by imitating that deep, loving, sacrificial giving of self to others, that's the way we can ourselves make present in this world the sacred heart of Jesus, the love of the Lord God. That's our mission, that's our joy, that's our purpose in life. May each one of us be given the grace to see that and to do it. Or as one of the great saints said, Lord Jesus Christ, three things I pray, to see you more clearly, to love you more dearly, to follow you more nearly day by day by day. And that is the message of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Blessed are you, Mary, among so women, Mary, blessed is your fruit, Mary, the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Thank you, Reverend Mr. Daniel Corso and your eminence for some inspiring words. There's no doubt a burning desire and love for the Lord that has inspired your priestly vocation. Thank you for being role models for the priestly ministry. Now you've had a chance to meet one of the ordinandi for this year, but we're going to give you a chance to meet them all now. The class has been sent questions from youth across the Archdiocese and we'll be answering a section of them for you now. My name is Deacon Adam Pantaleo, and I will be ordained for the Archdiocese of Toronto. Sometimes people ask me the question when they're discerning their vocation or trying to figure out what God wants for them, how important is it to serve others and to whether it's doing ministry or volunteering or basically how important is, is serving others and discerning your own vocation? And my answer is it's incredibly important. Uh, we know the great commandment is love God and love your neighbor. And I've really learned in my own discernment that the two are inseparable, they go together. So first and foremost, when I'm discerning my vocation, yes, I'm thinking of my relationship with God in prayer, and that needs to be first. That always needs to be the foundation of everything we do. But also, that's so closely tied up with serving others. And I know from my own experience of doing various forms of youth ministry, both before the seminary and during the seminary, especially being a totus tuus missionary, I really realized that it's when I give of myself when I serve others, when I love others, in a sense, that's when I strengthen my own relationship with God. And it's in those contexts that I heard my call to the priesthood and doing ministry and serving others. So to answer the question, I think the two are inseparable. We absolutely need to love God, but we can't do that. And we can't hear God's voice unless we also love our neighbor. Hi, everyone. I'm Brother John Wong. I'm from the Congregation of the Disciples of the Lord. What passage in the Bible 
has happened to you in your discernment. In the Gospel, John chapter 6, 68, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. This sentence often reminds me of what I really want on the journey of my vocation. Do I seek something in this world? Or do I just follow Jesus Christ? Is Jesus enough for me? If Jesus is enough for me, and then I don't need to adopt my vocation. I just follow him firmly. My name is Connor O'Hara. I am studying for the Archdiocese of Ottawa Cornwall. Another question that we get frequently asked is, what's the importance of role models? Well, I think that role models can give us an example, obviously, but they're also able to show us some of our deficiencies too. You know, if somebody has a different vantage point, they're able to notice things that we don't notice. If you're standing at the top of a hill, you can see things looking down that somebody at the bottom of the hill can't see. So I think these role models are able to help us identify some of our shortcomings, some of our strengths, some of our weaknesses. And so I, I think that especially in the faith dimension of our lives, these role models are essential because the Christian community is not supposed to be isolated individuals. We're supposed to be living the Christian journey with our neighbor, loving our neighbor, serving our neighbor. And so these role models are really, I think, essential in many ways. Hello, everyone. My name is Eduardo Lopez, and I am studying for the Diocese of Toronto. So a prayer that can help someone uh, discerning a vocation is, to me, is the rosary. Uh, I didn't, before, before I started to, to discern the priesthood, I didn't pray the rosary. But then when I started to, to consider in the priesthood, I familiarized myself with, with the rosary and I, since then I've been praying the rosary daily. My name is Matthew Wong and the question is, uh, have you ever doubt about your vocation? Because for the discernment is a, a very long time. It's a, it involves your, before you make the choice and also involves the whole formation time. So in my, for me, in the beginning years of my formation, I sometimes really was tempted to, to imagine what if, what if I'm, I was having marriage life, especially when I see my so many friends, they were getting married, they were, they were working, and they were having so happy family life. But I know that because these two ways, both are very good, I can only choose one. They are, they are both very good. So, yeah, that's, uh, I have chosen this one actually, as I said, is Lord chose me, called me to do the, to follow him in this way. I just need to, yeah, to follow, follow my commitment to this way. And uh, yeah, I, I will say in the beginning years, I, I did have some temptations to think about that, but I know I'm sure God is really calling me in, the, in this way to serve him, serve his church. I've been asked the question, why would I become a religious when I can do just as much good out in the world? That's true, a lot of good can be done out in the world, and I'm sure you're all doing a lot of good. But remember, the vocation is a call. It's not a career, it's a call. It's not just something you search after because, well, I think it's a good idea. It's God calling you. It kind of gnaws at your heart. And in the depths of your being, you feel like you've got to answer it. Like any vocation, you just don't, well, I'm gonna do this. Well, no, you think about it, you journey, you speak to the Lord about it. And that's the same for religious life. It's something that the Lord is calling me to. It's a call to real deep communion with him for the sake, not just of yourself. Yes, we want to become holy, but also for the sake of the people of God, to be able to reach out to them and to serve them in ways that possibly you would may not be able to do in the world. So it's a call. 
and you want to respond to that call with all your energy. And it'll happen. You can't ignore it. God will be there tapping on your shoulder. And take the opportunity then, search it out, pray, ask him for light, for guidance. Hello, my name is Deacon Fraser McLaren and I am studying for the Archdiocese of Toronto. The importance of the seminary in formation is crucial. Uh, the seminary is a place where uh, men who are discerning the priesthood can come for many years and really delve into the faith. Um, this is now my seventh year in the seminary. And to really discern God's call requires a lot of silence, a lot of prayer, and that is what the seminary gives you. But in, in addition to that, the seminary is like being when the disciples were, were with Christ, they were with him during his time in ministry and they were learning from him and they were growing in faith with him and then they were sent out. And that's what happens here in the seminary. We have this, this very privileged time to be with the Lord, to grow in our faith, to grow in our love for him and then we're sent out. And the seminary is so unique in that because we can focus just on the spiritual life, on, our, on, on theology, on the things that we need to know we won't have that opportunity anywhere else. And to be around other priests and formators, the seminary gives you that time to discern and to grow in faith. My name is Deacon Alex De Silva, and I'm studying for the Archdiocese of Toronto. Is the call to serve others an important part of the call to the priesthood? Yes, I think priesthood is about serving others. We have, to, as Jesus' commandment states, we have to love God and our neighbor. And who is our neighbor for the priest? It is the people of God to whom he is entrusted to, or who are entrusted to him. And so I think that serving the people of God is very important in the priesthood. My name is Deacon Daniel Corso, and I am studying for the Diocese of St. Catharines. I've been asked, uh, why, why be a priest? And more specifically, why does the world need priests. Uh, uh, I, I think, uh, first of all, of, of the, the priests that have meant so much to me in, in my life, and especially uh, at a time when I was, when I was questioning um, not God's existence so much, but, but certainly God's goodness and, uh, and God's love. Um, the the priests that, that had a great impact on me when I was in university, um, they were, uh, they were uh, religious priests, so they, they had taken vows of, of poverty, of, of chastity and obedience. Um, and so these were men who were, they were poor, you know, they, they didn't own anything. Um, they, they were celibate, you know, they, they, were, they were priests, so they're not married. Um, and they were totally obedient to their superiors. So uh, in, in essence, um, they, it seemed like they had none of the, the things um, that our, our world was, was telling me at the time, and certainly our, our world is still saying that, that you need to be happy. And so by, by all worldly logic, these, these men should have been, you know, grumpy. You know, they should have been uh, kind of miserable, I guess. Uh, but instead, the, the opposite was true. They were actually um, the happiest people that I knew. They were actually the, the most generous people that I knew, uh, the most loving people that I knew. And uh, what that, that caused me to, to rethink a lot of things, especially um, especially what it meant, what it meant to, to really be happy and what, and really, really what, what life is all about because um, either, uh, either these, these joyful men are, are, are crazy, right? Or they have something, they have a, a, a secret to joy. They have, they have the ultimate secret to, to, to a happy life and more than that, a, a, a joyful, fulfilled life. Um, and and it became very clear that, that that secret wasn't so much of a secret, but it was, it was the simple fact that, that they knew that, that God loved them, they knew the God who loved them, uh, and they just wanted to share that right with, with people like me, with, with kids like me, uh, and that changed my life. And so when I'm asked, you know, why does the world need priests? You know, I needed priests to remind me of, of the goodness of God and especially of, of God's love for me, and, and that, that love, um, that God Himself is um, is everything, right? It's, it's, it's all that I need. It is it is my life. You know, it is um, it is what I need to uh, to live, and um, and that was just such a such an incredible 
uh, experience for me and I, I was of course extremely grateful for for their witness um, and I want to do that you know as a priest I want to be a witness of of, of God's amazing love God, a, a love so amazing that um, that it's worth everything you know that that uh, that one can one can you know experience the hardships of this life and um, experience even even loneliness or, or you know whatever it is and still rest secure in, in the peace and joy of of God's love um, so why does the world need priests? Uh, because it needs witnesses to, to God's amazing love. Uh, and that's what I want to be. Hello, my name is Deacon Peter Luco, and I'm studying for the Diocese of Peterborough. God willing, I'll be ordained to the priesthood this spring. One question that I often get asked is, how can I discern my vocation? What kind of tools are there to help me discern? And I think the first tool is your parish priest. You can always talk to your parish priest. Sometimes it can be a little bit intimidating, but you need to talk to your parish priest. I strongly recommend it. He can help guide you into a certain direction, maybe get you in touch with the vocations director. The vocations director, it's his job to help guide you to understand where God is calling you. Most people are called to married life, but some people are called to the priesthood and some people are called to religious life, being a religious brother or a religious sister. So these people are important people, but there's things that you too can do to help discern your vocation. Take time in prayer, five minutes every day. You can sit in a quiet spot, whether it's uh, in a chapel, in a church, in your room, wherever is quiet, where you can just talk to Jesus. And you can say, Jesus, what do you want from me? You'll be surprised to hear the answer. Now, you're not going to hear a direct answer, but you'll feel it in your heart. You'll feel Jesus is tugging you in a certain direction. You also have to be willing to say yes. And so that takes prayer. Open a gospel, read a few verses of the gospel and see where Jesus in that moment is calling you. Ask a trusted priest friend to help you. If you're confused in your prayers, if you don't know what's going on in your heart, ask a priest who can help you. We're happy to help you. We're happy to walk with you and journey with you. And these, these, these tools to help figure out what's going on in your life is really important. It's always important. Yes, we have to consider the things that we want and we have good, we have skills. Uh, you know, some of us are good at music, some of us are really, really good at, at academics, and some of us are really good at sports. How is God calling us to use these skills for Him, for the church? Again, some of us it's marriage, some of it's, it's priesthood and religious life. But the, these prayers, these are the priests that will help guide us and help us discern our vocations, these are the tools that we need to really answer God's call for us. It's an individual call. It's one that belongs uniquely to me. My call is mine. But it's God who calls you. Your call belongs to you. It's God who calls you. It's God who wants you to answer. It's God who loves you, who wants you to serve him. He's calling you to follow. These priests, your prayer, will help you to follow, will help you to follow in the way that God wants you to. You'll be in my prayers as you continue your own journey of discernment. I pray that you'll keep me in mind. I look forward to serving my community in Peterborough. Thanks everyone, God bless. I wanna thank everyone who has taken the time to join us today and listening to the witnesses of faith today from all of our guests, in a particular way, the Ordinandi class of 2022. You're in our prayers. I wanna thank in a special way, the Sarah Clubs of Toronto for sponsoring this event. We hope and pray that next year we will be able to do this in person. Keep safe, keep well, and God bless.
Thank you for joining us for this virtual Ornandi youth event. My name is Anne Brisbois Abbott, and I'm a member of one of the Sarah Clubs here in Toronto. Sarah is a Catholic organization whose mission is to foster, promote, and pray for vocations. The Ordinandi event is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year with this video. We created this event to reach out to students in Catholic high schools across the Archdiocese of Toronto. You are important. We value you and hope that these events will stir within you a desire to create or to continue to nourish your closer relationship with God through prayer, action, and celebration. God has plans for you. To those who are concluding their high school career and moving out into the world, please take the opportunity to have Catholic fellowship where you go. And to those who are continuing their high school career, we ask you to take opportunities for Catholic leadership in your school. And finally, God bless you.